Someone asked if I could do a, a test on one of these, and I'd never seen them before, so I bought one. It's a lighter, and comes all nicely presented. A chunky metal case, which is all parted on one side and completely blank on the other. Uh, and you open it up, and when you press the button, I don't know if you'll even see this, it's got an electrical discharge, an arc occurs between two contacts. And if you put something like a cigarette, I presume, I don't smoke, so I wouldn't know, uh, if you put something like a candle flame, it will light the candle. You can't even see that. Uh, there you go. That's fine. So, um, yes, it's quite interesting. It, it's quite a powerful little arc. And uh, when you press the button, it's worth noticing that... Uh, I'll just put that uh, candle out of the way at the moment. It's worth noticing there is a safety interlock. If you press the... put the lid down, it has a switch contact that it won't actually uh, fire the arc unless the lid's open, so that probably protects it from being uh, burned out if, you know, it was in the pocket and uh, the button got pressed accidentally. For charging, it's got a little tiny LED in the side, which is very nicely aligned with this hole, and it's got a micro-USB charging connector, so it's got a lithium battery inside. Well, I presume it's lithium, I would think it would be a lithium. So, um, the arc itself is between these two electrodes up here, and it's very high frequency, it just makes a loud, uh, you'll hear it if I pulled it up here, I don't even know if that will come across, but it's a very high pitched whistle, uh, and a sort of very white noisy type noise that you'd expect of an arc. Uh, I wonder if you'd get an electric shock off that, only one way to find out. A bit of fresh solder, and a metal case. And I'll put this into the arc, and I don't think I'll get shocks at high frequency. Right, okay. Yes, you can get an electric shock off it. Ooh, that felt quite interesting. <laughs> ah, right, okay. So uh, it's high frequency, but it must... Uh, the only time I've had a shock quite like that, from such a high frequency arc, was when I touched the output of a high frequency inverter, and I de actually deliberately bridged both connections uh, in the belief that the skin effect of high frequency travelling over the body would not give a shock, but uh, it turned out there was quite a strong 50 hertz ripple on it, and that felt quite extreme. So that, uh, definitely, I felt that smack in both my hands there, which was uh, interesting. I wonder what that was then. Okay, let's uh, open it up, shall we, and see what's inside. A uh, neat, small screwdriver. Is this going to work? I see two screws in the bottom. I don't really see much else. I'm not sure if this lid is actually going to be interfere in taking this out. I'm not really sure. I'll find out. I like to just randomly remove screws until everything falls apart. Oh, actually, I think... Did that just move up? Yes, it has. Okay. Okay, there's a little button, there's a little screw, so I shall keep these. I, I quite like this, I'm not uh, really planning on going too far. It's held together with sellotape. Uh, where's that switch? Oh, right, okay. I can see this yellow wire, uh, I can see it when you flick that up. It goes over to what looks like an electrical contact in the back in there. So that will be the first safety device. Um, the precarious moment when you're taking things with the lithium cells apart. At the moment, I'm seeing this block here. I don't know if that contains electronics as well, or if it's just a transformer. I can see it's potted in resin, and I can see windings through it. I can see quite a coarse winding, and I can see lots of fine windings. It's not really maybe showing up that well. Maybe that's all pretty much all I can see there. Um, let's see if we can get this out. So I'll remove the tape. This is where the tape is now separated into lots of little bits. Let's try from the other side. 
Ooh, the transformer's pushing out. The circuit board, is that lithium cell free to pop out or is it jammed in? I don't want to use unreasonable force in a lithium cell, it always ends in tears. There is some active circuitry including a power component on this board. power component that at first glance on reflection I can't actually see anything written in that in the way of an identifying number. No, it doesn't have a number on it, that's a bit annoying. All it says above it is HB-801 but I think that might be a model number. There's a 4.3 ohm resistor Ah, the resistor is in line with a winding, but it's a thin winding. So let's take a look at the transformer itself. Oh, let's not, because I've just seen a spring behind this transformer that if I pull this transformer out, that spring is going to pop out, and I'm not sure what that does. I don't know if it's booby-trapped in some way to actually stop it working. Uh, the transformer in the sense says T-C-U-N. 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 Yeah, there's a spring in there. I don't want to uh, have this burst into bits. It might be one of those springs that doesn't go back in very well. But at this point I can see the transformer has the two high voltage windings coming out of it. They're sort of double insulated in a clear uh, plastic and uh, they're sort of stiff looking wires inside that and they're going up to the high voltage area. Yeah, it looks like one of those may be going up to each of the electrodes. That's why it's got a double insulation on it even though that is quite a high voltage in that. Uh, if you consider that gap is about five or six millimetres, that could be about five or six thousand volts or so. Um, the transformer, because I'm guessing this is just a transformer, has one heavy winding. Oh, you know what, this is going to come out, it's going to come out. The spring, I don't know what that spring does. Um, it's got a heavy winding twisted with a fine winding. I'm guessing the heavy windings are the primary, <clears throat> and one of them is going to, it looks to be going to this big transistor here, and the fine winding is coming back to that resistor, which suggests it may be a feedback winding. This looks like a single transistor oscillator. Very, very simple circuit, uh, like this type you can use to drive TV flyback coils, single transistor TV flyback circuit. Now, if this was a, the, this transformer is probably very similar to the type you'd find used for cold cathode back, backlights. It'll be the same sort of multi-bobbing construction, uh, but really resonant in because of the high voltage and the fact it's effectively opening virtually open circuit, operating open circuit. And um Normally with those they use a Royer circuit which sort of push-pulls because that's quite important with the cold cathode tubes because if you don't use the sort of push-pull arrangement, if you don't give it a symmetrical output, the mercury migrates across from one end to the other. Uh, it's not so crucial if you're just doing an arc like this, so you can just use a single transistor oscillator. And that's what this looks like. The circuitry at the bottom here, I can see a couple of components in a transistor, but I think they're more to do with the fact the charging LED is in the back here. So fundamentally, I think this is a super ultra simple um, oscillator. 
I can see a capacitor potentially tacked across two pins down here and that also alludes to the fact it is just a high power single transistor oscillator with a fairly heavy winding in here and then an ultra fine um, secondary winding and then the feedback, uh, the, the secondary winding going up to, the, to do the arc itself. It's quite neat. It's quite a surprising transformer that it can sustain an arc like that from such a tiny little transformer. I do wonder what the shock element, I wonder what I got a shock off though, because normally the high frequency output of those, unless, uh, I'm not 100% sure, unless I messed up the uh, feedback in some way and it, I don't know, started oscillating as something the harmonic and gave that, because that, it felt odd actually, it felt like, it didn't feel like an AC shock as such, it felt just like a, actually, you know, do you know what it felt like? It felt like those shock lighters, which is basically what this basically turned into, where you press it and it's a coarse buzzer and it just gives that whoosh through the, through the hands. So that's interesting, there's not an awful lot to see here, I may just investigate that a tiny little bit further, but uh, other than that, uh, it's quite a neat little unit, quite a neat little unit indeed, it's quite smart. Reverse engineering complete, and I'm now going to celebrate with a full packet of cheese puffs, probably. If I can actually manage the, the whole packet of cheese puffs. However, the circuitry in this lighter is extraordinarily simple. The bulk of the circuitry, if anything, was just to monitor the charging. It wasn't any active charging control, because that's already built into the lithium cell. It was just a PMP transistor, and, uh, and just a generic one, and some resistors, a diode, and an LED, just to basically make this little red LED light while it was charging. So I've not drawn any of that down, it's just very, just a, it's just a charging indicator. So, the actual circuitry. When you open the lid, uh, it energised the whole circuit. But nothing actually happens until you push the button. However, to keep the current away from the button, because otherwise it could be quite a lot of current through that button, what actually happens is the, uh, the power is applied to two ends of the coil. And one of them is the heavy primary winding in that high voltage coil. And it, then it goes straight to the collector of a transistor, that power transistor, which must be an NPN just from its configuration. The other connection in the positive is the feedback coil, which then goes through a 43 ohm resistor, quite a beefy little 43 ohm resistor, a diode, an A7 diode, and then the button itself. And when you press the button, that closes the feedback circuit and it starts a sort of cascade effect. The output is a very high number of turns, presumably, um, and just connected to the output. It seems to be, it doesn't seem to be connected to these other connections. So. The shock I got to the case might have been because I touched one of the electrodes, is all I can think, and then the other electrode arced onto the case to complete the circuit. That's all I can really think of what happened there. And that probably would have made it go a bit unstable and would have uh, given the lower frequencies, which would have been, yes, which definitely felt quite unpleasant. So what actually happens when you press the button, a small amount of current, a modest amount of current actually, starts flowing through this uh, carefully chosen resistor and diode into the base of this transistor, which starts to turn on. When it turns on, current flows through this coil, which induces more current in this coil and that coil at the same time. And as the current's induced in this coil, the um, drive to the uh, transistor increases up to the point that no more current can be induced and the field starts collapsing, whereupon that then goes negative and then this transistor turns off and it just, basically the field collapses and then it starts again. So it's basically, it's pulsing the transformer all the time. I'm not sure what this little capacitor here was. If this is the power transistor with the terminals here, it was just kind of blobbed across. I couldn't actually measure it without desoldering and there was so much in the vicinity I didn't want to desolder it. But I'm guessing it would just be maybe in the sort of nanofaraday type region, just at the low nanofarads. And it's just to make probably the circuit more stable, maybe change the frequency it oscillates at. Um, but uh, that's it. There's very little in there. And remarkably, now that I've uh, soldered it all back together again, it does still work. So, um, yeah, quite neat. Let's uh, light that candle again. Let's see if I can blow myself up again. Da -da. So, uh, yeah, interesting little device. Just a very unusual application, which... I suppose, really, the the fact that they can make those transformers uh, generate such a high voltage in such a small space is what's made this possible. But quite a neat idea. Quite smart indeed.